Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to continue our discussion of the Filmic RGB module. In the last episode we discussed the first two tabs in the module, Scene and Reconstruct. Today we're going to continue with the last three tabs. However, before we crack on, I'd like to share with you a great tip left by Stephen on the previous video and it concerns how we can visualize the overexposed pixels while creating the mask. His tip is to toggle the row overexposed indication. And as you can see, you can see all the overexposed pixels now in red. And if you display the highlight reconstruction mask, you can build the mask around the pixels in red. Alright, so next we have the Look tab. In a nutshell, the Look tab defines how the values that we entered in the Scene tab are translated into your display capabilities to produce the final image. That is, the white point and the black point and the midtones are translated into the maximum luminosity and minimum luminosity and midtones of your display. The reason we need to do that is that the dynamic range of your camera can and actually definitely will be different than the dynamic range of your display. That means that the zero luminosity or complete black and the 100% luminosity or complete white are on a different places on the curve in your camera or camera sensor and in your display. To do that we have here an S curve that shows us how the translation is being done. You have a mid-tone range here that is actually expanded on your display. That means that this mid-tone will take a longer space on the curve for your display but to do that we will have to compress the areas that are outside of that mid-tone range so the dark and brighter parts of the image. You can see that here on this curve by the compression the curve here is the compression that's happening at the edges. All right, so we have a few sliders that help us do that. The first one is the contrast slider, and that one allows us to change the contrast or the slope that in the middle of the curve here. To the right, more contrast. To the left, less contrast. And as you can probably see here this is as well is translated into a bit more sharpness and local contrast so you can keep an eye on that and pulling it completely to one almost disables the S curve as you can see here the next slider is the latitude and the latitude is the mid-tone range that we're actually translating and the higher it is, the more mid-tone range you're affecting in the image, which is better. So we should always aim to have as high a latitude as possible. However, if we push it completely, you can see here that we're starting to have a yellow part in the curve and the yellow parts are clipped areas. So. In this example here, we've started to clip the highlights. The next slider is the shadows highlights balance and this defines where that range is placed. By default, it's in the middle between the shadows and the highlights, but we can use that to move it. So if you go towards the highlights and you're giving more space for the highlights and you're crushing the shadows and vice versa. However, let's reset that and pull back that up and you can see that we've had that 
clipped area here we can use the shadows and highlights balance to try and fix that if possible it's not really possible in this case as if I fix the highlights I'm gonna start clipping the shadows but you can see how it might work in a different situation the last slider is the middle tone saturation because the pixels at 0% luminance and 100% luminance so black and white don't have any color information we need to desaturate the midtones gradually to avoid having a cutoff point or too harsh transition between saturation and desaturation you can change that cutoff point and or how gradually we desaturate by moving this slider if you push it towards the right you'll have more colors and the transition towards the cutoff will be quite harsh and if you push it towards the left the desaturation will start earlier in the curve and it will be more gradual now the point is to have a natural looking image with enough colors but to avoid a harsh transition between the color and the midtones and the desaturation at the ends because otherwise we'll be producing halos or other artifacts in the image so you have to keep an eye on those the next tab is the display tab and the display tab is automatically generated for you based on your display and the settings that you've put in the scene and so on and so forth the manual says that you rarely have to touch it you shouldn't have to touch it actually for that reason we'll touch lightly on what those settings are but we will not go into details as we've just mentioned we're trying to remap the dynamic range between the scene and the display and the settings here set up the dynamic range of your display so you have the black luminance and the white luminance the last tab is the options tab the first one is color science and this setting defines which set of algorithms Filmic will uh, use to do its job. You've got V4 which is the latest uh, version of Filmic. If you wanted to use the previous version for some reason you can use V3. If you've already edited a image with an older version this will be by default v3 and you might want to change it to v4 to make use of the improvements in the latest version next we have preserved chrominance and this defines which algorithm or which method filmic will use to preserve the colors in the image because if we apply those s curves to the RGB channel separately then we're actually affecting the color because as you can see this is not a linear curve which means that some channels will be affected more than others in some parts of the channel and that will change the color in the image to counteract that Filmic uses a set of methods to preserve the chrominance or the colors in the image let's go through them one by one and see what the manual says no does not attempt to preserve the colors and the effect is that there will be more saturation in the shadows and less saturation in the highlights max rgb uses the maximum of the three channels and it tends to saturate the skies however again according to the manual it can produce halos quite quickly so be careful when using it Luminance Y produces a linear combination of the three channels and it tends to incre increase the local contrast, especially in the reds. However, again, according to the manual, it does not work very well with uh, saturated and out of gamut blues. RGB power norm uh, uses a formula which is the sum of the cubes divided by sum of the squares and it produces a result that's um, a good compromise between the previous two and the last one is RGB Euclidean norm 
and this one according to the manual is RGB space agnostic so it will produce the same results uh, regardless of the color profile it works more heavily on the highlights and desaturates them and according to the manual again it's probably the closest to color film look there is no right or wrong in those you can just choose whichever looks better for your image and in combination with the other settings the next two are contrasts in highlights and shadows and they're the same but one for highlights and one for shadows they let us select the desired curvature here at the end of the RGB curve hard is the default and that produces more tonal compression in the highlights and in the shadows respectively you can select soft to have a softer split of course a softer slope will take a bigger place or will take a bigger space on the curve so just by selecting soft we've introduced some clipping and we will have to go back and fix it the same would work in the shadows and if we want to keep that we're gonna have to go back to the look and maybe decrease the latitude until we fix the clipping so you can see it's the S curve is softer that means it curves slowly which means that the highlights and the shadows will use a bigger part of the curve next we have the use custom middle gray values checkbox and this one allows us to set the middle gray values in filmic however as we've already discussed in the previous video it is recommended that we do that using the exposure module before we start using filmic so it's disabled by default next we have an auto adjust hardness checkbox and this one is enabled by default this settings allows filmic to automatically calculate the power function also known as gamma that is applied on the output transfer curve next slider is iterations of high quality reconstruction and these are how many times the reconstruct highlights algorithm will be applied to the image if you add more iterations you might get a smoother or a better reconstruction of the highlights but it costs more processing powers but you could try adding more iterations in difficult situations to see if it helps next one is add noise and highlights which adds noises in the reconstructed highlights so that they don't look too smooth in comparison with the surrounding areas like the previous one you can try adding more or less to s in difficult situations to see if that improves the transition and the reconstruction of the highlights or not. And the last one is the type of noise you're introducing. In the interest of time, I'm going to leave the discussion of the display and the different modes for a third video. This will as well be a, a sort of a summary of the whole module as we discuss the different modes we'll talk again about the settings that's it for this video i hope that you've enjoyed it if you have any questions corrections or remarks or suggestions please leave them in the comments below and i'll see you next time bye bye